As the sun heats up, it will eventually make the Earth uninhabitable unless we can somehow move farther away from it. Here's what you need to know. In around a billion years, increases in the sun's energy output will ensure oxygen levels on Earth drop to levels that cannot sustain complex life, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. However, astrophysicist Ethan Siegel suggests on the website Big Think that one compelling solution to this disastrous outcome is to attach a massive thruster to the South Pole to move Earth's orbit. Earth's problem is that the increasing concentration of helium in the sun's core leads to gravitational contraction, causing the sun's inner core to heat up, which in turn increases the rate of fusion. That ultimately increases the sun's energy output by about 10% every billion years, and Siegel explains that there are only so many defenses and feedback mechanisms our planet has at its disposal. As an alternative defense, then, Siegel calculates the Earth would need to move an additional 4.9% away from the Sun, from an average of 149.6 million kilometers to an average of 164 million kilometers to maintain energy levels as they are now. Any thruster looking to generate that movement would require 500,000 times more energy than the total generated by humanity in history continuously for 2 billion years, and Siegel suggests this could come from a massive array of solar panels. Subsequently, the thruster itself would be built at the South Pole, where it would not interfere with the Earth's existing direction of motion and could, over millions of years, propel the Earth to a greater and safer orbital distance from the Sun. The conversation explains that the mechanics of such a thruster could involve firing out a stream of charged particles that propel Earth forward, using similar physics to that used for launching a rocket into space, though it would require the energy equivalent of 300 billion billion launches. The new orbit would move us out of the path of some space objects and into the paths of others, according to Siegel. But we could achieve the goal of reducing the amount of the sun's radiation hitting our planet, buying us billions of years before the sun ultimately runs out of fuel. Unfortunately, as of now, we're only capable of affecting Earth's spatial positioning by accident, with a study earlier this year finding that recent human activity has shifted the Earth's axis and poles by about 4 meters since 1980, due to changes in how the Earth's mass is distributed around the planet caused by ice melting. If that effect, plus some warping of the Earth's crust also caused by ice melting, is all the movement we can muster, then research from 2016 published in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics shows the planet is in for a somewhat rocky ride. After the sun's initial energy output rises, oxygen levels will drop dramatically and the oceans will disappear in about a billion years, and we all die. Then, within 5 billion years, the sun will grow into a red giant star 100 times its current size, according to a 2016 study published in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics. At that point, the sun will swallow up and destroy its two closest planets, Mercury and Venus, and it'll destroy most of Earth, perhaps just leaving the rocky core intact. Beyond that point, in 7 billion years, the sun will then experience intense loss of mass due to strong stellar winds that will see it evolve into a tiny white dwarf star, and somewhat tragically, if the Earth's rocky core survives, it may continue to orbit the white dwarf star like a sad old bald guy who's forgotten where he parked his car. The only small consolation for Earth at that point is that it's definitely not going down alone. In fact, about 6 billion years from now, the sun's demise may go as far as heating up the asteroid belt, causing the asteroids to spin faster and faster until they are torn to pieces, according to the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Journal. Initially, most of the asteroids will be reduced until they become small homogeneous fragments, and the study predicts that the sun will then collapse into a white dwarf and absorb the smashed asteroids, which will pollute the star and change its spectra. It seems pretty safe to say that if they did somehow get that far, future humans would be dealing with a lot of problems. However, before we get to tackling the boss level of dealing with the demise of our sun, we do first have to get past the early rounds of trouble we've made for ourselves in the form of man-made climate change, which could kill us off in the next 500 years, never mind the next billion, according to the latest study in the Global Change Biology Journal. Researchers from the study explained in the conversation that Earth will gradually become uninhabitable if governments across the globe do not act more strongly to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Their study's results show that by the year 2500, the Amazon will change into a place that is too hot and dry for plants to grow in, leaving a barren wasteland with no vegetation and little human activity. In the American Midwest, the model predicts that today's cornfield prairies will be replaced by a hot and humid subtropical climate where AI drones tend to strange plants engineered from oil palms. 
In the Indian subcontinent, the study predicts that humans would have to wear air-conditioned suits and use farming drones to grow food in the intense heat and humidity. The scientists say the modeling reveals a future where agriculture and humans have moved towards the poles to escape the intense heat and humidity of the equatorial regions. In short, if we want to get to the point where we start thinking about giant thrusters saving us from the sun, we should probably stop setting ourselves on fire first. According to a press conference, Jeff Bezos envisions human colonies in outer space capable of holding up to one trillion people in rotating cylinders called O'Neill cylinders. The O'Neill cylinder was developed by Princeton physicist Gerard K. O'Neill in 1974. According to data from the National Space Society, the design is made up of two 20-mile-long cylinders, both measuring four miles in diameter. The cylinders contain three land areas that cover a total of 500 square miles, they rotate in opposite directions, keeping the colonies aimed towards the sun. Bezos stated that the colonies would have high-speed transportation, farming land, urban areas, and recreational areas with zero gravity. He added that some areas of the colonies could be replicas of famous cities on Earth. The weather in these cylinders would be adjusted for optimal human comfort. According to Bezos, there would be no earthquakes and no rain. He claims that these cylindrical colonies are a better bet for sustaining human life outside of Earth as opposed to Martian or lunar colonies due to how far and how small they are to Earth in comparison. In order to cut costs, Bezos proposes transporting humans to and from the colonies in reusable spacecrafts such as Blue Origin's New Shepard, a suborbital space vehicle powered using liquid nitrogen designed for space tourism. China is creating an artificial star that burns at temperatures eight times hotter than our sun by replicating its energy-generating hydrogen fusion process on Earth, according to Science Alert. The sun's heat ensures hydrogen nuclei move at high speeds and its mass and gravity limit the space available, inducing collisions which generate massive amounts of energy, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak and hefei China works by recreating these conditions using magnetic coils to hold superheated streams of hydrogen plasma in place, according to Science Alert. One Zero explains that once the hydrogen is floating inside the magnetized chamber, it's showered with an electromagnetic current that strips the atoms from their electrons, forms a plasma, and then heats that plasma up. As China's star can't compress the resulting plasma to the same extent as the sun, the particles must be heated more to increase the chances of collisions. In May, it reached a record plasma temperature of 120 million degrees Celsius for 101 seconds. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.